Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I'm going to run you through a little tiny process I like to do all the time. I do this in my presentations, I do this in my troubleshooting, I do this in my baselining. Uh, it's a really cool simple concept. It's called a PC cleanup and you can replace that word PC with server, switch, router, NAS, doesn't matter. And and the premise is the same. So I think you're going to you're going to find this quite helpful. A lot of my customers uh, start calling me the network janitor over the years, so I thought I'd put that up there because I think it's kind of funny. And let's jump right into it. So why bother? Okay, well, removing unnecessary protocols and services make life a lot easier for everyone. I know, it sounds like a sales pitch. Now, just hold on. From the desktop perspective, less protocols and services results in more application stability and consistency. So for the people paying attention, this is what your clients are complaining about. Not things are down right like the old days things are slow or that they're not stable and they're not consistent from a network perspective extra protocols on the wire means more data to analyze capture store and research store is important because there's a lot of stuff these these trace files can get huge we're talking gigabytes right so if you can eliminate extra stuff then you're going to store a lot less and, and don't forget the analyze part because the more stuff you have and the more stuff you have to analyze the best time to clean up configurations is when things are working well. So you're not guessing if you actually need them during a troubleshooting scenario. And, and again, this is quite an important point. Don't wait for things to break and then do this under the pressure of troubleshooting as well. I commonly refer to this process as a PC boot up configuration protocol. And exactly what it sounds like is, is exactly what it means. Get a PC, you boot it up. Based on its configuration, it's going to send stuff out. Based on the network and server configurations, they are going to respond possibly to the stuff, and that becomes your baseline. The easiest way to capture this data is connecting a computer and your capture device to a spam port, hub, or tap. Now, hub's kind of important because we're not dealing with performance like throughput, right? We're just watching the behavior of the protocols and the behavior of the configuration. So a hub is just fine. So if you got an old 10100 hub lying around, knock yourself out. Just make sure if you plug that hub into a production switch, there's no security issues like port security. There's no issues with half full duplex mismatches and that sort of thing. Basically, you power on your computer. When the hard drive light activity subsides and there's a login screen on, on the PC, then guess what? You're done. That's it. So just a rough reference is good enough for this exercise. Step one, IPv6. Uh, a lot of people are not using IPv6 in production. If you're not, get rid of those bindings. And conversely, hey, guess what? If you are IPv6, then get rid of IPv4. Uh, I, I have yet to run into a scenario where you know, you're going to need both all the time. And yeah, and we'll leave it at that. So basically, if you are dealing with IPv6 and you do a capture, there's IPv6, there's the IPv6 addresses, as you see here, right, spitting out of a box. If you use things like Wireshark and go to the protocol hierarchy, there's obviously a mention of IPv6. In this case, 104 packets came out of the machine. Uh, and, and this is a great part of the exercise because people will see 100 packets or 20 packets or 50 packet whatever and they'll say ah so what it's 100 packets yeah but you know what sometimes the problem is it's cumulative it's not one device with 20 packets it's 300 devices with 20 packets and that tends to be the problem so cleaning this up helps the overall issue okay going back to that previous slides points you go to your local area connection properties you'll see everything's on by default and in this case we're just going to uncheck the internet protocol version 6 I know there's a lot of people who are going to say you uncheck it still you know might do stuff you're absolutely right but you know what just just to do something to start with something there you go later on if you find you uncheck it and it still spits out a couple then you can get into the hardcore registry ripping things out and all sorts of stuff I also like to uncheck the box because if you did need it for something you can always just check the box again so this is better than nothing in my opinion LLMNR I've already written a few articles about this protocol I've yet to find a legitimate use for it and it's on by default of course and you would see it come out of a machine uh, on boot up query that sort of thing and LLMNR that protocol is one of those protocols that you cannot type in the display filter box up here so in this case I used a UDP port filter 5355 and I could see it all and in this case it's IPv6 and IPv4 right so it's using both of those protocols and of course in Wireshark in this case this thing shot out 62 of these packets on the boot up as well 
Well, if we go back to our local area connection properties box, you'll see link layer topology discovery mapper and responder. And basically I remove those two check marks from those protocols, done. MDNS. MDNS is kind of different, okay, because it's DNS. We all need DNS, otherwise you obviously can't get to the internet. But M stands for multicast, and, and that's why here you can see a multicast IPv4 address. In this case, it's not really a protocol, right? Like, it's not an additional protocol like I've shown you in the other examples. In this case, this is due to Apple's iTunes being installed by default on these machines by the vendor. And it uses this bonjour protocol we're going to call it that for now and bonjour uses multicast dns and it uses it to advertise its services it uses it to look for services uh, and that sort of thing so um, i think most people who don't have apple products don't need this on their machine by default if you did have apple products then it's more of a question do you need a corporate image and that sort of thing okay and and when you really get into it then you start to say do you even need a bonjour right you can just have the apple software on there and you don't really don't need the protocol all those things tend to come out so there you go that's that's the mdns stuff in case you see it flying around your network qos is another one i like to throw in there because the qos packet scheduler again i've yet to run into uh, an actual pro program or application that leverages this protocol so i can turn it off as well that's it so every single one of those examples um, i would say is not going to be a silver bullet but Cleaning that up will, I believe, help you tremendously baseline, troubleshoot, and understand what is left when you're actually trying to troubleshoot a problem. There you go. Hope that helps. Have a good day.